Scott Bass. We've got Colby Plus with us here today on Spit. Colby Plus, the warm, comfortable, buttery is the word we often use, Yamamoto rubber wetsuits, full suits. And you and I are big fans, and we don't need them down here, do we? The water's warm <laughs> here, but look. Right, look at right next to you. Feel oh, the butter. Cool. Oh my There's God, the I'm butter. Sleep at this thing. Are you kidding me? Don't touch that on your face. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what we do need down this here. This is cool. So they have they have jackets. Yeah, that's a 1.5 I brought for the trip, but have not needed it, unfortunately, because I would love to wear it. But look, the Colby leash. Oh yeah. If you ever place a Colby order, just throw in. I've got two here. I'm gonna leave them with the crew. Like if I don't need them, which I probably won't, just leave them down here. This stuff's hard to get in certain parts of the world and probably expensive. You can get it from Colby Plus for way less than you could ever buy leashes in the past. And uh, it's a beautiful gift to leave behind. So well, Colby, well, yeah. Colby Plus has not only wetsuits, but traction, leashes, everything else that you need. That's very kind of you, very generous of you do. You know what the other thing is important if you look at this packaging? Yes. The leash is wrapped in a circle as opposed to like a tight coil. Like, or a tight coil or like a... It's almost like a figure eight. Yeah, figure eight or the worst is like a big oval where there's a kink that gets put into the leash and then you go to use it and the kink never seems to go away. You know what I mean? Like it maintains that kink yeah. for the rest of its life. This, you get no kink with Colby Plus. Kinkless. Kinkless, Kinkless leashes from Colby Plus. Um, Real Water Sports also just dropped or just got inventory on three new Christensen models. And Christensen is actually debuting the three new models through Real Water Sports, yeah. which is kind of cool. Um, 30 boards in his inventory from Christensen. I have a secret to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Chris's last week and I ordered a new board. That's it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you had first access to these before Real Water Sports did. No. You're just not. embarrassed to admit that you ordered a new surfboard. I kind of am. But my wife already knows about it. It was one of these things where I was just, I was at Chris's. I was looking. His, By the way, he's got a beautiful new showroom. Have you been there? No. It's super cool. You got to go check it out. Yeah. A beautiful showroom. He and his girl put together. It's got full Christian synesthetic. It's got beautiful boards, cool photos, everything, you know, a little couch to chill and watch videos or whatever. And of course, all the boards are there, and I'm geeking out on them. And he, Chris and I are talking, and he's like, hey, why don't I make you a board? And I was like, yeah. I mean, it was, that's all it took. Boom, I was in. He saw and I'm excited about it. I'm excited, and I'm so stoked. To be he saw you as a mark totally. when you walked in the room. I'm um, a, I am a mark. Well, This is coming in kind of hot. but Okay, can well, you down. can adjust. I'll turn down my levels just a bit. Um, okay. Well, uh, test, test. Sorry. It's all right. The three. You can always ramp it up. You can never. And if I talk at this voice, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, the three board models that Christensen has, there's a long fish, there's a short board, and then there's an alternative short board, high performance kind of short board. So like I said, three new models debuted through Real Water Sports. Go to realwatersports.com. There's a banner on the homepage, you can click over, and then they've got about 10 boards in each model. So a variety of sizes for each. I'm sure they'll go quickly, but realwatersports.com. As we see, some movement at the takeoff zone. It's Kelly Slater grabbing rail. Yeah, guy. Yeah, El Hermano. El Hermano. Yeah, guy. We are in El Salvador. David, it's spit. It's all things spit. We're talking surf. And it is Wednesday, April 10th or 11th. I've sort of lost track, which means I'm on vacation. It's the 10th. Okay. Well, David, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, let's see. We've got some Kelly Slater to discuss. We've got the great new uh, release from STAB regarding women and how they get paid. The sexualization of women surfing. Thank you. The sexualization of women surfing. And, uh, of course, Margaret River's coming up, Survival League. So, David, good day to you, dear citizen. Don't bury the lead, man. We're here in El Salvador recording in person for once in our lives. 
So, I know this is the first time we've been in person. I just realized this just now. In years. It's been years. Since COVID. Since COVID. So yeah. it's been five years. Crazy. Well, the much hyped and discussed listener trip has come together. And uh, I got to say, it's gone off without a hitch, man. I mean, can yeah. you ask for anything more? No, look. Right now, you and I are sitting here. We're surfed out. We had insane sessions this morning. We just finished lunch. And we're starting to kind of get into that, or at least I am. I can't speak for you, but I'm getting into that vacation mode where my rhythm is right. You know what I mean? All the stress of travel is gone. I know everybody here. The the staff is super friendly, super cool. I'm having a ton of fun talking with our crew, which are we've got a fascinating crew of people right yeah. from a family of four to um a physicist and i mean it's been great it really i did not anticipate that detail of the trip like i was thinking about waves and i was thinking about the resort how you know those details the highlight of the trip is the group of people that have shown up um how smart is everyone by the way Super smart. I, I feel dumb. I'm just going to be quiet and you guys talk. I'm listening. I'm just shocked at how smart everybody is all the time. I agree with you. I feel like I'm forced to comment on these conversations. Like my well, they, foot has been put in my mouth numerous times. That's the thing. They want to hear from us because they're all here via the podcast. Don't they know? I guess. <laughs> they know now. They know now. I mean, we're literally sitting around dinner and they're like, Oh, yeah, did you read that book about the history of El Salvador? Oh, yeah, I read that one on the way down here. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the government and the politics and all the changes and stuff. And I'm like, I'm learning so much, but um, I appreciate that that you guys took the initiative. Well, I have had surfboard discussions. So I I had a really interesting talk with Sam about Donald Brink and his fabulous designs. Um, I've had in-depth discussion with numerous people about the difference between being a surfboard designer and being a surfboard shaper and what that means for the marketplace and for the industry and for the culture. And, um, I mean, Nick, Nick Timponi, who's on this trip with us makes another distinction, which is shaper versus board builder. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A guy that can do it all that can, you know, pick, pick the wood, cut the wood, shape (laughs) the wood, you know what I mean? Do it all by hand and get it done and be a, a, uh, what would you say? Like, what's that phrase? Soup to nuts. Yeah. Be a soup to nuts board builder. You mm-hmm. know? Like his father is, and like he is. And uh, well, Nick doesn't shape, so he would argue. Oh, right. Okay. He's yeah. a laminator. Right. Yeah, but we will get into some more about the people who are on this trip. Um, it's been a delight. Everybody's so cool. I want to shout out Hotel Los Mangos. Has been incredible. Um, it's the only resort on this bay. So like there's a beach break right out front front. Punta Mango is a very good wave right at kind of the end of the bay walking distance for us. But this is the only resort here. So we have it's on a hill so we can kind of survey everything from the restaurant uh, Palapa and we have full access to it. There's other spots nearby short ride in the car, um, but we've got everything right here and we're not competing with another resort. Yeah, I'm super psyched on all things Hotel Los Mangos or Punta Mangos. What is it? Do we know? The- it's Hotel Los Mangos. Hotel Los Mangos. So um, the food's been insane, which we mentioned. The, the food's s- been incredible. The staff is super cool. Everything's been great. Yeah. And I'm super excited about it. And I've had people, friends of mine already said, hey, you're down there right now. I've got a buddy that wants to go surf some right points, you know. And I'm like, dude, bring it. Like, I just got out of the water with three guys. Yeah. I surfed out. My arms are noodles. Yep. I've got a massage coming up. Yep. And uh, I'm super, super amped. And it was this was just the perfect little vacay that I needed. It's easy. Easy. It's so easy. Yeah. They've got us dialed. So thank you so much, uh, Hotel Los Mangos. Waterways Travel is the one who actually put all of it together. It's a property that they work with. Um, I talked to the owner of this property and they built it 10 years ago. He gave me some of the backstory and the history and um, which ties in with some of the political history for El Salvador that our friends were telling us about last night. 
But basically, a lot's changed in 10 years. Um, new president, and I guess he owned a PR company prior. And so, like, he's fully rebranded El Salvador. Um, and it's become a lot more safe. So Ricardo, the owner of this hotel, was explaining that, you know, 10 years ago, it would be groups of surfers, dudes basically coming to surf. But now you have families coming, you know, and like we have families in this group that are with us. And uh, everything's just, he said there was a lot of refugees, people who had left El Salvador that go to the U.S. for a better life decades ago, never felt comfortable coming back home. And now they are, they've done well in America and they've, they're so comfortable coming back that they're buying property here, like buying an apartment at the beach or whatever, and coming in vacation and getting to see the family they haven't seen in 20 years. We've seen tons of infrastructure rebuilding, the road here, working on the bridge today. Um, so it's epic to see, you know? So the last time I was in El Salvador was 20 years ago, more or less. And I flew in with Jimmy Rotherham, whose father, Bob, owns a hotel at Punta Roca in La Libertad. And um, and Bob Rotherham, by the way, is, he was on the cover of Surfer Magazine. There's a classic surfer, you know which one I mean? No. It's like a 1972 issue of Surfer Magazine. It's a Craig Peterson like travelogue type of cover shot. And it's a silhouette of two guys on the beach of Petacalco, and one of them is Bob Rotherham. So his son, Jimmy, who's, who's El Salvadorian, he was born here, um, we flew down with him, me and Derek, my friend Derek and Brian Szymanski. And when we got off the plane in San Salvador, we got into our little rental car and we drove out to Bob Rotherham's house, his, you know, the restaurant, the, the hotel, like this place, basically. And we had to get a security guard. We, Jimmy's like, dude, here's the guy, his name's, his name's Emilio. He's going to be your muscle. He's your security. He'll take all your photos. You're going to pay him X amount a day. And don't worry, when you walk out on the point, don't worry about all the, like, meth heads with guns and shit. Because it was gnarly 20 years ago at Punta Roca. It was a scene. There was gang members. It was just, it was sad. And today, I'm surfing here at Punta Mango. This guy paddles up to me, guy you saw in the water yesterday. He goes, hey. It's Emilio. Remember me from 20 years ago? My security guard, my muscle, is out there teaching Brazilians, helping Brazilians get into waves. And I'm like, Emilio, how are you, man? And we chatted and talked about Jimmy and about those days back then and what he's doing now. And he's the guy that was out in the water yesterday when you were out there. What getting are the Brazilians into odds? Waves. There's some newcomer, like newbie surfers from Brazil that are trying to learn how to surf. So yeah, how cool is that? I ran into Amelia from wow. 20 years ago. That's insane. Yeah, pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, in terms of how things have changed, every day that we've surfed Punta Mango, three dudes show up on the beach with cameras, two photographers, one videographer, plus a guy running a drone, so I guess four photographers. We didn't even know they were there. We get done surfing, we come back to the hotel to eat, they show up with their brand new MacBooks, and they're like, hey, we've got all your clips. Do you want to take a look? And then they'll sell you your entire session for 25 bucks. I was telling them this morning, I'm like, hey, I heard your drone this morning. I looked up and I said, that's the sound of $25 right there. <laughs> <laughs> Times five yeah. people, you Very know, true. probably. So, and they're, the quality was incredible. Like they're using top rate cameras, obviously computers. Um, and then they just airdrop them to you, which makes it so convenient. Yeah. It's like a no brainer for 25 bucks. So we're having a blast. I mean, it is, we're having a really, really world-class experience. Yeah. And like I said, it's just too easy. Like I haven't had to do anything. By the way, yesterday, Marcos, one of our surf guides took me up to his mother's property with a couple of other surfers in our group here. And we surfed a spot by ourselves, a killer right-hander that, that breaks on a reef and runs onto a sandbar and the left is a ledgy slab all on rocks. And it was a super good way of super rippable. And, um, you know, that's, there's more than just Punta Mango and Las Flores. There's other ways. I know you surfed a wave today. Yeah. So that, which will shall remain nameless. Yeah. And there's a lot of those nameless wa uh, waves. The other thing is our group is, I think 18 surfers. We're never in the water altogether at once. 
So like today we took two different vehicles. Some people surfed one spot, another group surfed the spot that Scott's talking about that I surfed. And then Scott surfed out front at Mango with a couple of guys. So everybody's kind of diversified. Yeah. Um, it's worked out really, really well. Three guys, so. I surfed with three guys and two of them were Brazilians that didn't know how to surf. And I surfed with eight guys of our group. There was nobody else around. We had the point completely to ourselves and everyone got waves and their complete fill of waves. I got 20 waves. By the easily. way, the swell is pumping. Like we've had a sick, you know, the forecast was four to six feet. It was easily six feet yesterday. It was at the prime peak of the swell. It was kind of mapped out. Yeah. And um, so plenty of fun, fun swell. And I say that because when I saw four to six feet on the, on the forecast, I thought to myself, okay, they're probably overhyping it. It'll probably be three to four feet with an occasional five foot set. But this was a legit long distance, long period south swell that had a lot of meat to it. Yeah. And this way Puna Mango is no joke. Like you kind of got to know what you're doing or you're going to, you can pay the price. Yeah. So it could not have come together better as far as I'm concerned. Uh, big question from last week. We had two big questions. Would you bring the microphone that you're holding right now? Turns out you did. Congrats. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> the other, it's funny that you say that. I do feel very, very fatherly now. <laughs> when the guys wanted to stay for the session number two this morning at that spot, I almost was like, you guys need water. You need food. There's no way you could stay out here in Central America for a second session. But I shut my mouth and let them make their own decision. Uh, anyways, second question that inquiring minds want to know is, did you bring one board or two? And what did you bring? Yeah, I just brought one board. And I brought the Ryan Sakel Twinser. It's 510, 21 inches wide. The model's called the Howler. I sent pictures to Ryan yesterday. I'm like, hey, the board's working insane. He goes, killer, let's do this. It's going to be a new model. We're calling it the Howler. He told me that before. He's like, if you like it, we're going to go with it. So the Howler is the, the model. It's basically kind of a like a high-performance, fishy kind of outline. And uh, it's the Twinser uh, iteration. So super stoked on the one board I brought. And of course, we, we have the Bobby Quad here from Channel Islands. So That's right. That I know that Marcos rode that board. Um, I think Daryl's ridden that board. A few other guys have ridden it. And I haven't really heard anything about it. Have you talked to anybody about how they felt about it? Uh, I didn't even talk to them about it, but I saw Marcos catch a couple waves on it, and he was shredding. He got yeah. great waves on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, huge thanks to Channel Islands for that. And then also the travel bag that I brought uh, from Channel Islands, the board bag is insane. I feel like I probably sold a couple of those while we're down here because guys are loving them. And that backpack that you've got right there too is epic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, major thanks to them. Um, but uh, so the Bobby Quad, I'm, I'm getting fired up on riding the Bobby Quad, you know. Um, I haven't gotten to it yet, which is unfortunate, be, you know, because of, uh, you know, we're doing the pod now, but we'll, we'll um, get to it next week when we do yeah. the pod. So the one board quiver or the one board traveling idea you got, I'd noticed feedback on Instagram and YouTube where people are like, dude, you're blowing it. You need to bring more than one. I think it only applies to some people. Like I've seen what you're doing on the board. You're right. You can ride that board in all conditions and you can paddle. Your paddle fitness is high. So you can just manage no matter what happens on a smaller board. Uh, for me personally, I brought two boards for two very distinct different reasons. And I need two. And I think most people need more than one, but it's not a mistake for you to bring one. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. I, I mean, I, I, ta I was talking to you in the water yesterday. I was like, wow, that's 610. That looks pretty good. Like, I get it. Like, plus the swell was pretty meaty. I could have easily had a blast on my 610 or on my 66, you know? And so, you know, could I have brought in another board and been stoked? Yeah, but I'm super stoked on the one board I brought. I am going to Indo, I'm bringing three boards. You right. know what I mean? Like. So, yeah. Well, I brought the 610 you're talking about is the morning of the earth. Simon Jones board that I've ridden for years and talked about for years. Channel bottom, twin fin. It's a Fiji model. You see Torn Martin riding it. Um, and then the 63 John Simon asymmetrical quad that I posted on Instagram a while back. But the reason I brought the 610 was first day here, just kind of like cruising, just getting your feet wet, you know, whatever. And then the second time I rode it was yesterday after I was exhausted. So it was like we surfed a lot for two days. Day three, my arms are super tired. I don't want to paddle a short board. There's still plenty of swell. 
610 is just a boat. I can paddle out with no problem. I can still duck dive it actually. And then I can stroke into waves with three paddles and I don't have to like stress about it. Yeah. So that's a good feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it does me some favors. Factormeals.com slash surf 50. Let me tell you, Factor Meals has filled a specific gap in our lives that has simplified our busy schedules and satisfied and nourished us. If you follow me on social media, you know that I love to cook. My wife and I love food and wine, but there are still at least five meals a week where we're just underprepared, short on time, and don't want to make a bad dietary decision, nor sacrifice the pleasure that we get out of dining. Factor has solved it. Chef prepared meals that are delivered to your house weekly. They take two minutes to heat up and they're designed to be eaten anywhere. There's no prep, no cooking, and you can recycle the package that it comes in. Delicious meals that are good for you with over 35 options to choose from each week. Go to factormeals.com slash surf50. Less expensive than dining out, more delicious, more nutritious. Factormeals.com slash surf50. Survival League, bros. Okay. Survival, Survival League. League. So Margaret's could start literally in like two hours. Here it's the 10th. Oh, okay. It starts on the 11th in Australia, which is we're a day earlier than them. So um, they're a day later. Um, and this forecast looks insane. It's six to eight feet and good winds today down there in Australia. Sweet. So I think it's going to start today, which would be fun, right, for all of us here at the resort to watch the event. Um, regarding Survival League, who, who's your guy? I mean, you're in the second round. Yeah, right? loser round. Loser round. Say that, say that out loud. You're Losers loser League. <laughs> Losers League. Um, I've got a guy. I think he's a sneaky pick, even though... He shouldn't be. Gabriel Medina. Wow. <laughs> I think that's a bad pick. Okay, let me argue against you before you make your point. His back is against the wall, right? He will not make the cut unless, I don't know what he needs in this event, but at least quarterfinals, I would say. Gabe never loses in those situations. He is the most clutch performer we've ever known in surfing. So much so, he was in this exact position last year he won the event. And last week when you and I were recording, we're like, how does Gabe do at Margaret's? I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember any performance there. I got a bunch of DMs the next day. <laughs> They're like, hey, dumbasses, he won the event oh last year. Oh my God, we are such dumbasses. That's hilarious. Gabe's the pick. All right, well look, you know, makes sense on paper what you're saying. What you're forgetting is that he called out the WSL in front of everybody, basically saying, it's a joke, the judging's lame, somebody needs to talk about it, and poor me. And I'm suggesting to you, like I did last week when we spoke, that he might be mailing it in, he might just be like over it. You know, like this could just be him just going like, I'm, I'm just fed up, I'm done, I, my head space isn't where it needs to be to be a, a champion at this event, to get through some heats. And, you know, I don't know, there's that. I think that's reasonable, but his ego is too strong at this point for that to overpower his desire to actually make the cut. Like, there's no way he could lose, he could not make the cut. Like, he'd have to prove himself and then he can bow out on his own accord, but there's no way he gets kicked off tour. But here's the thing, he hasn't even admitted that what he did was wrong. Like he had I've got an update to that oh, conversation. Okay, go ahead. So you and I did a thorough discussion last week and ultimately um, we said we didn't watch Bells, but then Gabe had that, you know, he called them out. So we went back and we watched that heat. Which means I watched his two best waves versus Cole's two best waves and Cole's clutch finisher that took the heat. Turns out I don't think Gabe was talking about those waves. I listened to Barton Lynch's analysis of it on the podcast that he does called The Stoked Bloke. He said there was another wave. Gabe got, did a full rotation air. And listeners pointed this out to me too. They're like, Gabe did a full rot on a sh crappy day at Winky that was insane. And he got a six point ride. It easily should have been an eight. If it was an eight, he would, that was the best score of the heat. The judges blew it. So when Gabriel in the post-heat interview is saying, this is the worst judging I've ever seen in my life, you and I are thinking, no, it was really close, actually. No, Gabe's saying the judges, you know, yeah. 
don't even know how to score an error. And Barton's point was actually, he agrees with Gabe. He was like, look, we were not doing surfing anywhere near that when I was on tour. We were doing surfing like they got their two top scores on. They're doing a better degree of it than we are doing. But what Gabriel did was so futuristic, it has to be rewarded. The judging has regressed. And we under and he also gave a little history lesson of look, when Jadson Andre, Miggy Pupo came on tour and they were doing those same front side rotation, 180 air, grab rail air reverses. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. The judges overscored it and then there was an adjustment and they underscored it. We're still in the underscoring phase. He's like, there needs to be an acknowledgement that what Gabriel did on a tiny day at Winky, that was a crazy air and it deserved an eight, you know? So the judges did blow it. So that's what Gabriel's frustration was, I think, now knowing that, more than what we thought that it was originally. Fine, great explanation. But my point is, is that he's frustrated. Like he, I sense that he's just like, you know, what's this all about? Like if, if they can't figure it out, why am I going up? Why am I banging my head against the wall over yeah. and over again? And you know what? I'm out. I'm killing it. I'm Gabe Medina. I'm, you know, and so this could be a moment where he's like, I can bail out on this event, lose the rest of the year, and we'll just see where my career takes me. I Which think that's coming. by the way, a gold medal in the Olympics, perhaps. I think that's coming. I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to show up to Margaret's and then just phone it in. He's either going to make a statement by not showing up to the event or prove himself, make the cut, and then make a statement down the road at some point. But I don't think he just haphazardly surfs heats. Well, here's what we do know, is it makes for must-watch TV, right? Like, yeah. in a weird way, this is a great thing for the WSL. Because yeah. I'm excited to watch Gabe's heats. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to see how he reacts to all this. And so we totally. should see. Well, who's your pick? John John Florence. I have John John. I picked John John. It was almost too easy. It's it's such an, a good pick that it scares me. Like I hope he doesn't like doesn't bust his knee out or something weird. You know, like he gets injured. That's what's crazy about Survival League is the safest picks sometimes take down the entire field. Yeah, exactly. The entire. Uh, well, I'm excited to watch it for the reasons that you just said. Uh, I will recommend Stoked Bloke for anybody who was unaware that Barton Lynch has a podcast. What I like about it is they're kind of to the point. Like it's 23 minutes long. It's him and Peter King. They just get right to it. There's not a lot of fluff, you know. So yeah, I I like it. Are you, you saying we have fluff? Do we have too much fluff? Turns out our listeners like the fluff. Oh, okay. So there's there's reasons or uh, needs for different things. Yeah. But their thing is great, and it's on YouTube as well. 23 minutes. Cool. There's also Surfline produced a video called Candid with Kelly Slater. Did you watch? I did watch. Um, it was an interview that Tom Carroll did with Kelly, and um, I took some notes here. Let me see what I got here. Well, while you're looking up your notes, I'm gonna say, yeah. major kudos to Tom and his brother, Nick. I don't know if you looked at the credits, but Nick actually conducted the interview alongside Tom and actually directed the video. Um, it's funny, Surfline published this, and the title was Candid, and I was like, I rolled my eyes. I go, you know what? Everybody uses that title, and it's often not candid. And Kelly's been interviewed a million times and not necessarily been candid. I was wrong. This was incredibly candid. Tom Carroll is the best listener I've ever seen in my life, which makes him a phenomenal interviewer. Kelly wants to talk. And I remember watching him on Joe Rogan two years ago. Joe Rogan did not care what Kelly had to say. And Kelly was like, trying to like share this information and then joe's like yeah well i like eating elk meat and then, and then like starts talking about hunting he was also interviewed by benji weatherly a few months back oh, oh my god benji stepped on everything kelly got to the point where he was saying benji 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 benji's the host benji benji wait let me finish this thought real quick real quick let me finish my thought and benji would just keep going you know yeah. tom carroll sat there empathetically and just goes yeah Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, just nodded his head, and Kelly let it all out. Okay, so here's my the overarching question I have is, is Hiawaska, Hiawaska. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Did you catch this? Yeah. This, this kind of, this was the news to me of the whole interview, that Kelly's had more than one Ayahuasca ceremonies. So it sounds like you know about this. To be clear, yeah. Kelly said plant 
based medicine journeys. Okay, well, what the hell do you think that is? It's either LSD or ayahuasca. Or is LSD plant-based? Plant, yeah, sure. A plant-based <laughs> journey? What I'm, the hell? What I'm just think? quoting That's him. It's got to be ayahuasca. It 100% was ayahuasca because he actually did a video, a testimonial video for Rhythmia Resort in Costa Rica that hosts ayahuasca retreats. Make sure that club soda can isn't in the camera frame. It's not. Okay, you're good. Um, so... A couple years ago, Rhythmia Resort in Costa Rica, they're known for hosting ayahuasca retreats, did a testimonial video where Kelly is saying, I came down here, I've had some things going on in my life. I don't know if you remember at that time, he and Kalani had taken a break, you know? So he was like going through some things that, and he talked about this in the testimonial. And then I came down here, I've got a complete shift on my perspective. I feel renewed, re-energized, all this. So at the time, there was public conversation about, look, Kelly is at Rhythmia talking about a transformative experience. He never once said, I did ayahuasca down here, but it was presumed that he did. Yeah. Well, now he made the reveal in this interview that you're talking about. Yeah. So. So in the process or after the enlightenment that occurred during this treatment, he acknowledged with his friend that he was doing an ayahuasca ceremony with that one of the things that he discovered or knew or became crystal clear is that he has a heart of stone. Mm. A heart of stone, specifically when it comes to, I'm focused on being a competitive surfer and everything else is not important. He said the heart of stone served him well and was the reason he was able to amass 11 world titles. By the way, I'm careful here because I don't want to I don't want to misrepresent what Kelly said. So I may have. You know, I'll like, quote it. Like, he said he said you know why I was the best competitor ever because my heart was stone. Yeah. And he elaborated beyond that. Um, did you see um, billions the episode <laughs> where they went into the ayahuasca tent and did no. ayahuasca? Every time I hear about a ayahuasca ceremony, I think about that thing where they like were super baking high, just out of their brains, and they like have to get out of the tent, and they both just vomit violently, and then are just like, "Wow, man, I love you, bro." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Kelly goes beyond just referring to the stone as being beneficial for him. He actually laments his uh, his how he raised his daughter or didn't raise his daughter, I guess. Yeah, and you know. I sensed a lot of remorse in that. And I don't think he ever mentioned regret. And I don't, I didn't sense that he regretted the decisions that he made in his life, but he did rem feel remorse about them. I think he acknowledged that the choices he made may have caused pain to yeah. others, you know? Yeah, I want to say, I did not get that quote or write that quote down. He acknowledged that it caused a lot of pain for his daughter specifically. Yeah. So he, Point is, he addresses his shortcomings as a father with his daughter, but he did not say that he regretted them. He's had a lot of remorse, but the distinction is he seems to be okay with the decisions that he made. But this conversation came up in light of his current impending birth of his son with his partner, Kalani. She's currently pregnant. And it seems like, to me, he recognizes shortcomings of the past he feels okay that he like, what he dedicated his life to, he achieved far beyond, he had crazy goals and ambitions and he exceeded them and he achieved those things. And that is what it is. There was these, you know, uh, the fallout of my shortcomings as a father that I feel terrible about now that I'm fully aware of them, but I don't wanna do that again. It seemed to me that this is a new trajectory that it's like, I wanna be a better father for this next son. I've already achieved all of my goals. And what I took away from it was no longer competing, like a major shift in his focus of his passion in his life. Yeah. Well, he was, you know, that's the thing about Kelly. I mean, you said that you don't think he's always forthcoming. I always find him to be very candid mm. and very open. And certainly in this interview, he spoke about the forks in the road and the specific fork that he took and, and that was at the detriment to relationships and other things in his life but he was singularly focused and perhaps you could say selfish and you and I've spoken about you know show me a 
a great world champion that isn't selfish. You know, they just don't exist. You know, like the great fathers of the world are rarely Michael Jordan or Kelly Slater or Lance Armstrong or whoever, you know, that are, you know, that are the peak pinnacle of their sport, you know. So that makes me, that brings up a question. Yeah. You, can, you and I can discuss, I guess, is, is it worth it? Like for humanity and society or just for sport, like to have somebody that dedicates everything to that, it's hard for me to say, hell yeah, like it's radical that we have Kelly Slater because his daughter was the victim, let, presum- presumably. So I know she will not say that that's good, but for humanity, is it, wor- is it <laughs> worth it to have? Humanity or Dave's humanity. <laughs> For sport, it's definitely good. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But for society, is it good? For humanity, is it good? To have these unbelievably, these unbelievable performers that push the boundaries of athleticism, physicality, it moves science forward in those ways, you know? Like, I don't know. I think you're, I think you're pushing it. The, the answer is, um, first of all, there's not that many of them. So is it good for humanity? I don't think they move the needle that much. You're saying they do because well, of science and because... Well, there's no question that what Kelly's done has influenced tons and tons and tons and tons of other athletes who the ripple effect is immeasurable. Like, we didn't think those things were possible. Yeah, but when I think of, like, um, Jonas Salk, you know, I'm assuming he was a great father. I think he was, although he did shoot his kids up with the polio vaccine to prove <laughs> that it was effective. But I think there are great, great people in society that maybe don't get the accolades that the Michael Jordans and the Kelly Slaters and the Tiger Woods of the world get in our culture, but that are way more important than those three guys that I just mentioned relative to humanity. Mm-hmm. And I'm, sh- and I'm, you know, I can't speak for were they great fathers or not, but I'm guessing that they probably had some balance in their life. And it wasn't like, you know, they had to wipe everything off and it was just me and my mission to be a world champion I mean, you know what I mean? So Jonas Saw comes to mind. I don't know. Um, I'm not. Maybe there's some astronauts that were great fathers, you know. Uh, you know, so. Yeah, I'm, I can't. I, I, I can't either. I wish I could speak to well, it. Well, I, I also wouldn't stack rank who's more important for society amongst those people. Um, but I'm just curious. You know, like I said, it's just kind of an interesting. Jonas Saw, more important than Kelly <laughs> Slater, yes or no? Yeah, 100% in that scenario. More important than. Jordan, yes. Jordan. Or for Tiger sure. Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah, more yeah, important yeah, than any sure. sports figure. Hun- yes, but the sports figures can still play a role of importance. You know, that's meaningful to humanity. Yeah, I'm comfortable saying that. I'm not saying it's worth it at the risk at the you know expense of their children or something Let me like ask that. You this. I'm, and it's not for me, by the way. Let me ask you this. Yeah, Kelly's daughter. Would it be better if Kelly didn't win all those world titles for humanity, and he was? Maybe more uh, in tune with that relationship. What would be Which better, is better for, human- for humanity? Impossible to say because maybe if he was a super attentive father that was there all the time, she would become a doctor who cured cancer, and that would be better for humanity. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I can't measure that, you know. But even if she didn't, you don't think that. Well, maybe we're going down a rabbit hole. Really, <laughs> Weren't really we not going to go down? I mean, this actually brings to light something that I think is important that we need to talk about, or at least at least acknowledge that Kelly's daughter went on Surfline, and we think it was Kelly's daughter, went on Surfline and posted something. And that thing was then not allowed on Surfline. It was the deleted. Com- the comment was deleted. It was deleted, was deleted. By, by the Surfline people, probably. And, and then it was dealt with, um, I think, didn't stab, or no, Beach Grit. Did Beach Grit acknowledge it? They acknowledged it, but they didn't. They didn't. Um, Out of respect for Kelly, they decided to not write a story about her or something. Here's the deal. Yeah. Somebody under the moniker of Kelly's daughter's name yeah. posted a comment on YouTube. Yeah. So we do, and we don't need to div, uh, divulge what the comment said. Right. So the comment was ultimately deleted. We have screenshots of it, uh, and it's very controversial. And then Beach Grit mentioned that that had been done. Derek Riley at Beach Grit was the author, and he said, you know, out of respect for Kelly, we will say what that person said. Yeah. We don't know if it's even the daughter that actually wrote the comment. Yeah. But look, it's sensitive stuff. And the reason I bring stuff. that up is that it's, it, it's already broad. It's like we're not the ones that are 
bringing this up. Like if Beach Grit's talking about it, that means their commentary section's probably splattered with stuff about it. Well, I said that I didn't have Kelly's quote regarding his daughter. Turns out I actually do. He said, quote, there's a lot of deep stuff there for me that I'm starting to unwind with my own daughter. I was just starting my career. I had these lofty ambitions and that caused suffering for her. It always, stuff like that always comes home to roost. I think that's incredibly candid and incredibly open hearted. And I mean, totally tip of the cap to Kelly. I, I, I'm just glad that he's like that open minded about it. You know, how many people would Tiger Woods among them would never even talk about any of this stuff. Like he needs to go pretty good. I mean, it's pretty, it's rare to get a champion that's this open about stuff. Tiger needs to go have a plant based medicine journey. I'm going to have a journey right now into the rest. <laughs> okay, commercial break. No, I'm not stopping them. No, leave it on. Leave it on. Squarespace is the all in one website platform that is designed for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to subscriptions. They have flexible templates with designs for every category, templates that are simple to drag and drop your artwork or logos into, but flexible enough to redesign to your specs. They have online store templates that make it easy to sell physical merchandise, digital or service products like podcast subscriptions and paywalled content. They even make customizable merch. You can design products and they will handle the production, inventory, and the shipping and handling. So let Squarespace handle it for you. They'll save you time, they'll save you money, and will save you money by going to squarespace.com slash surf. You get a free trial and you get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace.com slash surf. Enjoy. Kelly, uh, part of bringing up his uh, impending fatherhood, secondary fatherhood, he said, quote, when I see competitors getting ready to have a kid, your energy changes, your sharpness dulls. Um, So all of my takeaway related to this entire conversation was new chapter in life for Kelly that does not include winning world titles, full stop. Is this his retirement? interview yeah i think so because as you've stated we're not going to get a full retirement he's going to still surf in uh he's going to get wild cards as long as he wants so we'll see him at cloud break we'll see him at pipe we'll see him at fee in fiji but isn't it amazing i think he's 52 years old or something like that and we're still not 100 percent sure that he's going to retire like yeah. we're still there's been so many moments when he just comes back that you're like uh, not sure but 98% sure that what if he wins Margaret River does he advance does he stay does he make the cut I don't know the math yeah I think anything short of that he will not make the cut yeah um, but you know I think this is really I like seeing this this endears me to him more like if you're having a kid and you feel any way other than the way that he's expressing right now, yeah, you probably shouldn't be having that kid. Exactly, especially at this age. It's yeah, one thing if you're 18 or whatever. Right. No, especially at this age. Um. Any other thoughts on Kelly? Um. Not really. I mean, people should watch the. the it's a really, really good interview. It's on Surfline. Go check it out. And their YouTube channel too. Um. How surfers get paid the sexualization of women surfing. Oh, my. (laughs) This was great. I have a lot of... Here's my my overarching thing is I've never listened to Lauren Hill before in my life. I don't even know what she looked like. Not that that matters. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) No, my point is, is that I couldn't pick her out of a lineup is what I'm getting at. But I'm a huge Lauren Hill fan. Wow, she's an intelligent woman, man. Yeah. They were they were all intelligent, by the way. They were all super great, you know. Anastasia Ashley went way up in my book. All of the women that are featured went way up in my book. Like, it's just more proof that, and I've said this to you before, I believe, is that I think women are smarter than men. <laughs> what do you that, think about that? I think that's sexist. Yeah, it, damn right <laughs> it is. Um. 
Yeah, I don't disagree with let that. Let me put it this way. They're smarter than me, okay? Let's, let me just make it Like that. I said, after last night's dinner, turns out everybody's smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, sit, but... sit in a group for 10 minutes, and I'm like, hmm, it's weird that I talk for a living because... <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, although I would argue I listen for a living probably more than anything. Um, so, yeah, Lauren Hill. I Lauren just, Hill, super smart. I was just, she, she just really kind of was able to crystallize all of the discussion points that were brought up. You know, she just had a real kind of like 30,000 foot level view of it all. I published a podcast today with Lauren Hill. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> this is like your second one with her, isn't it? No. Thank you, though, for knowing that there was one in the past. It's a rerun of the one in the past. Oh, okay. I was going to publish a rerun this week no matter what, but then when they did that last week, I was like, you know what? I should re revisit that conversation. Yeah. We recorded it in 2020, September of 2020, yeah. kind of the end of the year, and uh, everything that we discussed was still relevant today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I republished that um for people to listen to who had the same feeling that you had about Lauren. And I love her actually. And I remember when I recorded that chat with her, I walked away just totally charmed and impressed. Yeah. That's like she's so her. charming. Right. Yeah. In addition to she's everything that smart. you said, just... well, it's such a rational assessment of things. Yeah. You know, like she's not demonize. I think her own words, not demonizing a G string or a bikini, not demonizing a girl using her sexuality to earn money. It's okay. Do you, whatever you're comfortable with, you should be able to do on your own terms. However, if Anastasia Ashley shaking her butt, twerking in a bikini at the Oceanside contest ups her paycheck significantly, and that's the only way to up your paycheck as a female because you could be winning championships, you could be doing everything else, and you're not offered a payday. But if you go out there and twerk, you're offered a payday. That creates a very narrow avenue for women to get paid surfing, right? And that is uh, the result of, you know, a lot of things. But the industry kind of uh, becoming myopic then creates problems. Anyways, so uh, I think. You know, what we don't want to do right now is <laughs> rehash, rehash what is already done in a really great way. Yeah, so they go do a watch job. this thing on Stab. If you're not a Stab Premium member, this is one of the episodes where you're like, you need, it's worth it, you know, in my opinion. So, but, but tell me who else, which of the other women or guys that are featured in it, um, you know, like I always look at it like thumbs up, thumbs did they drop or did they rise? I won't, to I won't, how you viewed them. I won't say who dropped, um, but I will say Coco Ho, incredible. Yeah. Coco, I did not think much of up until the re last couple years other than her surfing. And I'm not saying I didn't think much of her. I thought highly of her, but it was all related to her surfing that she was doing on tour. Since she's been off tour, I like her three times better. Yeah. And hearing her articulate some of that stuff, I thought, yeah. I love her, you know? Yeah. So I think Coco's amazing. I agree with you. Anastasia Ashley, I've never heard from before. Really interesting to her, hear her insights as well. I liked hearing Santiago uh, Aguirre, co-founder of Reef, talking about their advertising campaigns and, uh, you know, what, whatever, why they did it at the time, his hindsight about it now. I think Evan Slater was really insightful in terms of, you know, budget and why, how markets dictate budgets. It's funny when I, when they first cut to Evan and they ask him and he's like, well, look, guys sell more board shorts than women. Was, then they immediately cut to basically, what's the word I'm looking for? But they basically made him out to sound hypocritical. I don't think they did. With that, with data points, like basically all of the women going, women drive sales. Well, that's not data points. That's sharing two sides of an opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I interpreted it. That's what I thought was the success of this piece was it wasn't designed to make you feel a certain way. It offered a spectrum of all the different opinions. Yeah. And you walk away, you know, just feeling a little bit more knowledgeable about it. But interestingly, you started by really raving about loving the piece. I found out of all the surfers, how surfers get paid series or episodes, this one was almost the least interesting to me. Mm. And I don't know. 
if that makes me like it, it doesn't make me sexist. Long. Like it seemed like they kind of reiterated the same points over and over again, which they've done by the way in the in these in this format before. I just felt like I know all this to be true already and the So you didn't learn anything. I learned a little bit and what I found the most interesting was exactly what I find interesting about the other episodes, which is seeing the numbers of what people get paid. Yeah. When they show you women got paid one third from the major surf brands, women were getting paid at best one third for equal uh, ex- work, let's say. Yeah. Even though that's probably not the best definition. And then, by contrast, Red Bull, it's the opposite. Red Bull pays the women higher, not, not by two thirds, but by 10% higher, essentially, is what it came down to. Uh, I just like seeing those numbers, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but like the whole kind of why do as a society we feel and value these things and what's the industry's role in uh, the market, the market's desires or whatever, all of that I kind of already have my own assessment on and I think I've already come to terms with it and understood why it was that way then, why it's this way now. So I don't know, I like to hear Lauren talk about it, I guess, and other people talk about it. Well, the other girls, so what's kind of, one of my takeaways was it was fun to listen to all of the girls kind of give their reaction to say Anastasia Ashley's jerk, you know, whatever the twerking thing, you know what I mean? Or give their reaction to Alana Blanchard, what she's done basically with the way she's marketed herself. So the, the reactions that you got from Rosie Hodge or from um, our current world champion, Carolyn Marks, the reactions were kind of cool. I agree. Um, I still did enjoy the episode. It just wasn't my favorite of all the episodes. Um, well, here's the thing. I think the number one, well, one of the most glaring things was who wasn't included in it. And Alana? Stephanie Gilmore, not included. Alana Blanchard, not included. That kind of interests me. And basically what I got from that was their people were like, nah, we're good. It's for sure, Rip Crow and Stephanie's like, we don't even want to go into this space. That's fine, too. And I'm just I, assuming that. I'm not saying that's what I know, but I, I agree. It is fine, but I just found it kind of interesting. You'd think you would want to interview Stephanie Gilmore and Alana Blanchard, who are sort of the polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. Um, interestingly, we think that times have changed, right? And that reef ads used to exist in magazines and they don't anymore. But they show you the Instagram followers of those girls and how many world titles they've won. And it's like Tyler Wright, 200,000 Instagram followers, two world titles. Caroline Marks, one world title, 400,000. Carissa Moore, whatever, 700. Steph Gilmore, or whatever. It was like Steph Gilmore might have been 750 Instagram followers, and she has the most world titles. Above her, Alana Blanchard with 1 million Instagram followers, right? So it's like Alana's not won any world titles. And guess who's above her? Anastasia Ashley, 1.8 million or something. And then those coffee sisters, do they do soft porn in Australia or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're huge. Huge. And that's not surfing's fault. Now we're at, like, that's society. That's a bunch of horny dudes. So that's kind of the point is, like, we feel like things have changed. Do Have they? No, there's always going to be horny dudes. That's never going to change. There's been horny 16-year-olds since the... Adam Adam was a horny 16-year-old. It's more than horny 16-year-olds, though. Like, yeah, I mean, that that's 100. I'm not arguing that at all. I just, I don't know. There's going to be sex, dude. Look, there's three basic instincts, right? To procreate the species. That's, a, that's just in our DNA, man. That's what we do as a species is we procreate. And then the other two I won't bore you with, but that's the one where, <laughs> I do know the other two if you want to know. The other two are security within the society and um, well-being. In other words, gather enough acorns for the winter. Yeah. And then your hierarchy and the stratification of society. Those three things. Um, I like that they did this episode. Bravo to Stab for even trying to unpack the topic because it was pretty... Um, it's not only controversial, but it's just very difficult to kind of do a comprehensive job of. And I think they did as comprehensive as you probably well, could. Well, the, the, one of the greatest things they did was at the very beginning was just acknowledge that they were the worst at it. Like yeah. Sam McIntosh, 
and I had forgotten about Stab back in like whatever, 95 or 2000. I mean, Stab was just basically like the craziest soft porn surf mag out there. They did very provocative, highly sexualized, basically Playboy-esque spreads with like pro, like uh, fashion, Erickson. high fashion photographers coming in and doing these scenes. Yes, with Sage Erickson, Alana Blanchard, Rosie Hodge. Uh, Did Rosie do it? I mean, I've got the book at home with all of them that it's like, a, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just going to say, whoa, whoa. I'm just joking. I don't. Um, yeah, say, yeah, they all... All those people did. So, yeah, they were known for peddling smut, let's say, yeah. as much as anybody. But, yeah. So they acknowledged they've had a turn. Up, they've had a turnabout in ownership and stuff. And Sam was co-founder and owner back then as well. Yeah. But everything's changed since yeah. then. Anyways, kudos to them. The follow-up episode is actually Queens of Ascension, which I think looks more fascinating. And it's the women who have used these things as a trampoline to really rise up into the next strata of earnings and uh who would that be um we haven't already spoken about carissa moore we haven't really spoken about in that yeah. conversation moana jones wong you know oh so it's kind of like the next level yeah you the know springboard from that sexualization to now exactly equal pay equal maybe pay. lisa anderson would be a part of that conversation oh yeah she definitely needs to be a part of it yeah um, another name that I just thought of when you asked me who I liked in f terms of the interview subjects, Sue Izzo. Yeah. She was I great. I remember her from my days at Surfer, yeah. She was great. She was Sophia's agent, I believe. So, yeah, she's an agent, athlete, talent, uh, sports agent, whatever. And uh, just hearing her explain, explain how these contracts are negotiated and how value is determined, all of that, those sort of things are what I always enjoy out of these episodes. And, and and also the part which we sort of lightly touched on where Alana Blanchard wins back-to-back -back surfer poles or she wins multiple surfer poles and she's obviously not the best surfer in the world. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of dudes voting for the hottest, who they think is the hottest chick. Yeah, exactly. Although, and then even better is that they show Alana Blanchard's absolutely ripping. Like that wave she gets at 9.17, she's absolutely shredding. Like we all know this. You and I know this anyway. Alana Blanchard's a great surfer. She was on the WS WCT. Like sort of gets overlooked, you know? It totally gets overlooked. I would like to say, oh, it gets overlooked because look what she's promoting on Instagram. She's promoting her well, butt in a bikini. For sure. For sure. However, yeah. she just posted a clip a couple days ago surfing and she's – you know, got a couple kids at this point, not on tour. Yeah, but and there's she's a lot of butt in that. There's and a she's lot of shredding. Butt in that. There's like okay. follow cam. Okay, but she's still shredding. Yeah, she is. No, she's. Yeah. She, to nothing, this day. I mean, I, yeah. Look, so. I knew I was going to put my foot in my mouth when we talked about the segment, and I believe I've successfully done that. Um, <laughs> you know who else was great in this? But there was one other segment that I thought was really great. Uh, I lost well, one. Queens of Ascension could also include Stephanie Gilmore, who you mentioned was not included in this conversation. That could be reserved for that, you know? So anyways. I thought this was great. Like the editing was like the part, the little Bruce Brown part where they, they talked about the way we viewed women back in 65. I think Lauren Hill touched on that. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was good. I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Good. Great contribution to surfing for sure. Yeah. Rocketmoney.com slash surf. Just this week, my wife figured out she was paying a subscription for Showtime, but then also paying for Paramount Plus, which includes Showtime for free. That's precisely what Rocket Money was designed for. A modern tool that meticulously tracks the details that we easily get distracted from. It's a finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your monthly spending, and helps you lower your bills. It gives you freedom by helping you see your subscriptions in a simple dashboard and alerts you about hidden fees or increases. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash surf. Calm the clutter in your head, simplify the tedium of your financial life, and find freedom through rocketmoney.com slash surf. Are you, what do the waves look like from your angle? It's blown out. Okay, so we're not stressing? No. Even if it was glassy, I'm so surfed out, I'm not stressing. <sighs> 
So a couple of notes, people, people are like, hey, I want to hear you guys talk about how do you prepare for a surf trip? And uh, I was like, well, and he goes, I want to hear from other people on the trip, you know, from like working class dudes. And I was like, well, I think the consensus is two months out, you set like a pretty regimented like surf regularly, gym, diet, and then you don't do any of it and just hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> but like I burned myself out on day two wasn't even that good but it was just like what am i gonna do like go sit in the resort i might as well be sitting out here not catching waves and then if a good one comes i'll just get a set wave you know but i just burned myself out so then yesterday morning we paddled out when the waves are actually better and i'm like one night was not enough recovery i feel my arms uh, my paddle strength is just not where i haven't recovered yet so i should have taken less to surfed less yesterday yeah. you got to pace yourself on a trip and drink a lot of water so can't drink enough water yeah, you can't drink enough water you yeah. should basically be constantly drinking water which which we have been and mixing it with drinkag1.com slash surf absolutely i had ag1 yesterday and i and i was out for another session because of it you did an afternoon ag1 i did hey um, I got one thing AG1 I, right. you touched on it but i want to mention it again is this crew of guys are super intelligent and this this trip, more than anything, has sort of turn, turned into a book club. <laughs> like I've, I've been speaking to guys about all the books that we've been reading, that they've been reading. I've had books recommended that are now on my list of things to read. And they're all voracious readers. Garrett used to be an English teacher. Oh. So he's a nurse in a prison now. Wow. I know. You know, Gar Garrett's the six foot five yeah, hulking yeah. Yeah. human being. Um, so yeah, he's a big reader. I know for sure. But yeah. Um, another, I mean, look, I would love, I'm apprehensive to give you a profile or give listeners a profile of each of the people on this trip because it'd be doing a disservice to the others. They all deserve their own individual profile. But Daryl is 64 years old. He, he brought his daughter on the trip. He retired last week, which is incredible. He was a pediatric radiologist like crazy career right and uh this is a retirement trip and he brought his daughter basically it's just he's unpacking a brand new phase of life um and he's shredding yeah so he's 64 years old and i didn't have it's not like i even have expectations for how somebody would or could or should surf but it was just like he took off on a wave and just ripped the bag out of it and i was like what was that the dude's 64 like hardcore yeah, his first wave out here today, he pulled into a full-on barrel. No way. Yeah, very first wave, just took off, and it wasn't like go to the bottom and said, you know, took off from the takeoff, dropping into the tube. The thing what was wide open, then crumbled, crumbled him, you know, down to, onto the rocks. But, I mean, he's just charging. I know. It's really epic to see. Yeah. And it's inspirational for everybody else who's acknowledging exactly what I'm saying, and they're like, dude, I got to get myself into gear if I want to be there when I'm 64 doing that, you know? Absolutely. And if we're always inspired by, I'm always inspired by older surfers, you know, that are older than you or me or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Getting it's, it done. It's really cool to see. Um, one of the other guys, Alex on the trip, he's shooting video of everything. So we brought a filmer on the trip to shoot the surfing, but Alex is grabbing little snippets of everything else. He's got, um, b-roll basically he's taking the initiative to make an edit of the trip for everybody just as a contribution to the trip yeah like a home video basically for all of us and he's and he, a professional that's what he does for a living so it's going to be good he worked for the wsl in fact oh cool yeah so um yeah he's a professional and so it's like just stuff like that is like dude to take the initiative and just run with it and it's a incredible contribution that's so nice of him i know and he's cool. and he's having everybody send the surf clips too so it won't just be b-roll it'll be all the surfing as well so cool. pretty cool man super cool group can't thank everybody enough uh obviously waterways travel what about the trees wax we haven't talked about trees wax do, have you been using it i've got some right yeah, here yeah and but i was thinking do we have a musty moment i don't i do I, I mean my musty moment is the tube that you got the very first day Unfortunately, it's a still. You probably have video of it. Milo does. Um, Must see moment presented by Trees Wax. 
David Lee Scales pulls into his shack at Man- Punta Mango. Uh, very first wave ever ridden on that board. Yes. On that uh, John Simon. It was not that great. The video or the photos look better than the video. So on the drive down here from the airport, Nick, Tim Pony, Tim Pony surfboards. Um, he's like, let's all set an intention for the trip. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, God, this guy. Like. That's sweet. I know, but it was very sweet, and he was serious, you know? He's a funny guy. I love he's always trying to crack a joke, but he was serious. And um, he's like, I just want to get, like, a backside barrel. I've surfed with Nick prior, like, on Maui. He can absolutely – if the waves are barreling, he'll get a backside barrel. There, there's yeah. no question yeah. about his ability, but that was his intention for the trip. And then Garrett was like, I don't want to get injured. <laughs> 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 Which I was like, that's a good intention, actually. Um and then it came around to me and I was like, my intention is to go fast straight. Like, I just want to go fast. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not saying I don't want to do a turn, but like just going fast is good enough for me. And um, I've been able to do that. I got a bunch of set waves and I did exactly that on it. Intention achieved. Sweet. So I bring that up to bring up my must-see moment presented by Trees Wax, treeswax.com, petroleum-free surf wax. Um, mctavish surfboards yes who will be the featured shaper at the uh, icons of foam competition at the boardroom show this year yes they do a cool youtube channel and they posted a video yesterday called a custom for steph and it's stephanie gilmore coming and getting a board made by bob bob starts off the edit and he says She's been one of my favorite five surfers for about 10 years, but in the last two years, she's absolutely become my number one favorite surfer. She comes in, they're discussing what they want to do, like kind of a size. He explains like, let's do a V bottom, like single fin. She's like, sweet, I don't have anything like that. That'd be amazing. He starts to cut the outline. He's like, can we go asymmetric? She's like, yeah. So they make an asymmetrical, V bottom 58 plastic machine is the model. He's like it's the only one on the planet, you know. Um and when they're in the shaping bay, she says, as he as he says, like is it okay if we go asymmetric? Her response is, quote, "All I'm trying to achieve in surfing is speed. If I can go fast and feel the wind in my face, that's what I'm going for." Awesome. And I was like, that's what I said in the van 2 days ago. Awesome. If it's good enough for Steph, and I said it before I heard Steph say it, but I was like, honestly, anything. whenever I try to set a different intention, I let myself down. I'm like, I either don't achieve it or I do a lesser version than what I think. So let's go real simple here. We've gone fast this trip. Yeah. We've gone fast on waves. I'm gonna throw a little blasphemy out there okay. for both you and Steph okay. and to all the other surfers in the world. If you wanna feel wind in your face when you're in the water, and the waves are small, pick up a foil, you'll be flying faster than you've ever gone. There's two dudes foiling out here at the beach break one day. It looked incredible. Yeah. They were good. They were sure. I wish I would have hooked up with those guys. They left. I found out they left. They were from France. Yeah. And you want to hear how cool our group is? (laughs) Go on and on about it. Um. One of the guys in the group, Aaron, was talking to one of the servers one night, and the server is a surfer. He had one board, and he broke it. And he was lamenting to Aaron, oh, man, I broke my board. I'm so bummed about it. The very next day, Aaron, those French surfers, walked over, and they're like, hey, we have a board that we, were, we don't want to take back with us. I think it was a lost. Anybody want to buy it for 200 bucks? Aaron Paid 200 bucks, bought the board to give to the wait staff here at the restaurant. That's no, so cool. Knowing that that server lost his board or broke his board. You know what else Aaron did? Not on this trip, but on a previous trip. Is these kids were playing soccer in a soccer tournament somewhere. I don't know if it was Nicaragua or Costa Rica or something. And like somebody pulled up with their, their ice cream cart. And Aaron just called a timeout and bought ice cream for every single kid on the soccer field. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool group, man. Well, um, that video, Must See Moment, presented by Trees Wax, a custom for Steph. I found it on YouTube. It's on McTavish's YouTube channel. So 
seeing Bob in action was epic. Seeing Steph surf that board was epic. She surfed it obviously well. And then Bob's going to be at the boardroom show. I know. You guys, we can, everyone can come down and meet Bob McTavish at the boardroom show in October. He's such, if you haven't seen him on Instagram, if you have, you know, he's a very engaging, gregarious human. Yeah. Um, and this is your chance to meet him in person at the boardroom show here in October in, in, in Del Mar. So yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, our buddy, Kean Egan from Westlife. Yes. The, the pop band. Yes. He went on a surf trip organized by the McTavish brand where Bob goes on the trip with you. You surf together. You have dinners at night and stuff. I think it was to Indo maybe. I think it was the Maldives. Okay. That sounds right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Well, um, I posted our video from here last night and Kean commented on it, said he's coming on the next one. Oh, cool. So, Love it. So it's a small world, Scott. It is. Well, look. We've said a lot. We've talked about a lot of things. Some things may have made sense, we hope. But uh, either way, until next time, David, adios and aloha.